I'm Madeline Rosine here with Nick Bateman for La Faire Magazine and Joey. Um, how are you guys? We just did a shoot. We're good. We had a good shoot. Great team to work with. Can't complain. <laughs> Joey's like, I'm out of here. And he's um, done. He's, he's done. Evil. It's been a long day. He's been a good boy. Um, so I met you at a vegan festival. Yes. In North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, so you just made a transition to veganism. Yes, I Is did. That right? That's so cool. Yeah. I, I watched What the Health on Netflix. Not a plug actually did watch it uh, and yeah I just kind of made the choice to go vegan recently I guess I could be a pescatarian because uh, I decided to eat fish once a week but I'm vegan six days out of the week wow that's really impressive that's a commitment um, so for anybody who's never seen what the health um, can you kind of give like a little bit of an overview uh, long story short it just kind of teaches you that you know obviously the cruelty to animals the you know whole brainwashing of thinking that you know eggs dairy uh, meat is all healthy for you uh, when in fact it's not people might get mad at me for saying that but uh, from my point of view uh, I don't feel it is healthy um, so yeah it, it really takes you through the wide spectrum of like the all the health defects of eating, you know, meat and eggs and dairy with the carcinogens in it. So after seeing that, um, you know, I've always tried to be fairly healthy and I thought eating, you know, organic, free range, all natural chicken and, and, and steak was uh, healthy, but I realized that that was the healthiest version of a shitty diet. Got it. Um, which is obviously great for protein, and a lot of people might disagree with me, but uh, and it has been a challenge uh, finding, you know, a complete vegan diet because there are vitamins that are deficient in a vegan diet. So I've been taking B12 and etc. But uh, I could go on forever. But yeah, good for it's you. Been hard, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so are your friends vegan? Are you sort of in a community? How does that kind of work? <laughs> I kind of uh, called all my friends and was like, "You need to watch this." My mom, my family, and I was like, "Because you, you're once you see it, you're rattled." So anyone who really likes meat, I'm like, if you don't want to not enjoy meat don't watch it because yeah. you're gonna like it's really hard I used to love meat. I used to go to like STK and all these places Do you crave it still? Uh, no I don't really crave the only thing I've craved is fish and that's what I've continued to eat in moderation mm -hmm. Sushi? You need that sushi? Yeah I, I love that sushi yeah, um, but I think anything in moderation your body can handle it and like push it out but for me I was eating like gratuitous amounts of meat uh, like chicken and steak every single day because I thought that was a great source of protein for me and uh, you know, I, I decided to cut it out. You said out. Oh, I'm Canadian. You're Canadian. Yeah. You're from out, Canada. Out and about, you know, I got to be awesome. Canadian. Awesome. And you moved to LA how many years ago? About three years ago. Okay. Yeah. About three years ago. About three years ago. <laughs> and your parents still live there? Yeah, my mom lives in uh, Grimsby, which is close to Toronto. Okay, cool. Are you close with your parents? Uh, very close with my mom. Uh, not so much with my dad, but uh, I'm thankful for the relationship I have with my mom. That's awesome. Yeah. And she's pushed you in your career. How does she feel about you being uh, this successful Instagram sensation and model? And she must be so proud of you. Yeah, my mom's pretty much the whole reason I am where I am today. My mom was a uh, single mom, raised me by herself, and she kind of pushed me to do whatever I wanted. So if I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle, uh, she put me into karate. If I wanted to do this, she did this. Anything I wanted to do, it was never too big or too small if I wanted to do it. My mom made sure I was in the right place to do it. So um, yeah, she's very proud of me, and it's all a product of you know all the hard work that she put into me. and. Sometimes I didn't want to go to karate. My mom's like, get the hell in the car. You're and a ninja I, turtle. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't want to. And she's like, get in the But I'm thankful that she pushed me when I needed to be pushed. So, That's yeah. awesome. And does she come to visit you in LA? Yeah, LA? no, she uh, she's actually coming to visit me at the end of October. And uh, I'm going to take her to Halloween Horror Nights. Because my mom said she only had me for two reasons. To go see scary movies with her and go on roller coasters. Perfect. So I remember I was at Canada's Wonderland. It's a theme park that Paramount uh, Studios used to own in Canada. And I think I was like seven. And she took me to a roller coaster, like a huge one. And I just started crying after like the one hour lineup. And she took me to the car and she yelled at me and she said, if you're not going on that roller coaster, we're never coming back here again. And then I was like, okay. We went back, went on it. I've loved them ever since. So. Oh, I love that. Sometimes you just need that extra push. Yep. You know? She knew what she was doing. Yeah. yeah can't Definitely. argue with mom. I love that. So. Okay, so um, you're also a gamer. I overheard you talking about <laughs> Call of Duty earlier. Yeah, not a lot of people know that about me. Okay. Um, some of my, uh, me and my best friends, we will go on and one of the games that I've kind of been a little bit addicted to when I have a day off is Call of Duty. Okay. And uh, I'm what you would call a camper. Mm -hmm. And I actually enjoy camping and I enjoy pissing people off. So when I get like hateful messages and people be like, F you man, you're, you're a camping scrub. I'm like, I giggle to myself. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Because uh, I'm just that guy who sits in the corner and then when the guy comes in, I'll be like, pop, pop, pop. 
and then I'll go to the different corner. So when he comes in to kill me in that corner, I'm in the I'm already in the other corner. Oh, then, I so. feel you. I played Halo for years, okay. but I never played Call of Duty. I'm more of like an RPG, like Skyrim person. Okay. But I mean, I can probably get down with that. So do you play competitively? No, I'll play online. Uh, I get competitive with it. Like me and my friends will try to have the best KD ratio, which is the kill death ratio. Oh, wow. uh, so. I hadn't played for like six months. My friend came to visit me, and then we had an argument over whoever was better. And I'm like, "All right, let's go." And then he was visiting me for two weeks. All we did for two weeks was play Call of Duty. Well, so you have these outlets for your aggressiveness, so like Call of Duty, and then, I mean, I gotta bring up um, the both staff. Well, that, and also Hobo with a shotgun. Oh yeah. Sorry, but um, I've never been so scared of a person. I mean, yeah, were, that's a scary character. It was a fun character. I bet. Um, in, in martial arts, it kind of teaches you because I did a lot of stage performance when it came to like weapons and forms and stuff like that. And you have to be very big and you have to be loud and you know um, your aggressiveness has to show. So for the movie, I got to be very loud and aggressive you and sure scary. Did, yeah. And it was just that I worked with the director Jason Eisner. It was my very first film I ever, I've ever done. And literally every take I did, his note was louder, angrier. And I'm like. Really? Wow. He's like, no, just loud. So I was just okay. I'll go louder, and I went louder. And he's like, louder. I'm like, literally by the first week of the thing, I had no voice. Um, but no, it was uh, it was so fun working. People in Halifax in Canada are the nicest people in the world. It Is was, that right? Oh yeah. And yeah. that's where it was filmed. It was filmed in Halifax, and I had one of the best times of my life. So I uh, I really enjoyed the workshop. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so what's your next like upcoming? Um, you know, film. Yeah, I have a lot of things in the works. One of my main focuses right now is uh, I've been a huge fan of an X-Men character from Marvel called Gambit. Okay. And Gambit's a Cajun character from Louisiana kind of thing. And he is a thief and his weapon of choice is bow staff. Mm, so perfect. Um, I took a liking to him right away. So I realized that, you know, there's a market for obviously Marvel films slash shows. Um, I already shot my first short film. I'm going to be working on two more to try and procure and get into the character. I'm working with the dialect coach. I've got a script writer now. Uh, so I'm really excited to make it come to life and then, uh, you know, put it out there and see if I can procure this role and, and get it to be mine. So, like, Ryan Reynolds took eight years to get Deadpool made. Mm -hmm. And that's Ryan Reynolds. Right. Um, which is, he's amazing. So, for me, if it takes eight years, I'm willing to grind it out for eight years. Wow, you're willing yeah. to put in the work. That's, that's what it takes. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't. Right. Yeah. So, Joey and your other dog who didn't make it today, yeah. they're rescue dogs. Uh, Joey is a kind of a rescue. We have, uh, me and Maria, we work with rescue dogs, which we're going to show right now. That and does. Maria is your girl. Yes. Um, so we went into this pet store in Canada. It's before kind of like pet stores were banned. Mm -hmm. um, and in Canada. Yeah, because me and her are just addicted to animals. Right. So we walk in and Joey had been there for two months. And we found out that he was returned um, by someone. Yeah. And that he, like the woman just literally brought him back was like we he's not like my dog my old dog just passed away and I'm like you don't buy a dog to replace it you buy a dog to have right. a new dog just because it doesn't have the same personality as your last dog oh, but I am so thankful she did because he uh, he's one of the best dogs I've ever had to date I've never been a small dog type of guy um, but it was my first small dog and I kind of like roughed him up tried to make him be like a big dog and now he's so well behaved walks off his leash but yeah so we uh, we went in there and we're like He's been in here, uh, we found out he's in there for two months, we're like, we're taking him. So we took him, um, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. And then uh, we actually did save a dog last year for a show I'm working on called Rescue. So we were shooting like the pilot scissor reel. We drove up to Bakersfield, uh, and we rescued a dog that was hit by a car. He had a fractured pelvis. Um, so I fostered him for a month, and I used the power of social media to find him a home, and now he is living in a brand new home with a family, three cats, another dog, but he's like the star of the house, so it's, wow. it's a great feeling. Well, sometimes the power of social media can just really be used for such a good cause, you know? Yeah, and that's uh, that's what I try to do with uh, with mine. I think it's important to, you know, if you have any kind of influence to, you know, do the right thing sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you get a lot of attention on your social media account mm -hmm. for your dogs. Yep. and. Um, you, I think I've read an, an article about you somewhere, and it said, you know, I have this algorithm, and I sort of figured out what my algorithm is that for my success and my follower growth. Mm -hmm. So is that like 
one shirtless pic, one cute dog pic. It's definitely changed. Uh, you know, the world's evolving these days. It used to be like that and yeah. it used to work, but you know, Instagram changes their algorithms, people change, and you know, you gotta change stuff up. Like, there's only so many times you can post a shirtless picture with a dog before people are like, roll my eyes, let's get this guy out of here, it's so annoying. Yeah. Um, so over the last little bit, you know, I've realized that, you know, I've grown it and done this algorithm enough to where I, you know, I people know who I am if they, a lot of people probably don't follow me because they're like, this guy just posts shirtless pictures and there's no substance to this human being, he's right. literally just, and I don't blame them, it looks like a narcissistic page because it's all just me and yeah, I'm shirtless a lot of the time. So recently I realized that I want to start putting more organic stuff, which is, great the way that the world's changed this is what people want nowadays it was popular I guess two years ago to be posting stuff that was very like set up and, and you know right. cute and that yeah. kind of stuff um, but now people just want to see you know you being you and real stuff when they see that it's just you can tell you're doing it for the likes they're just like okay I'm over this that's so true yeah so um, what do you I, I feel like how you deal with kind of haters you know um, like even on Call of Duty, you're not you know snapping back at them, you know. But yeah. on your Instagram feed and your comments, you probably read some of your comments, right? Sometimes I'm very lucky. I've got nothing but love on my page, and then the few people that have been haters, I, I don't respond to anyone on social media when it comes to comments because the, the sad thing is is if I respond to one it's not fair for me to respond to one and not the others right um, so I can't like just pick people and be like oh I'll respond to you because then the you know thousands of other people who commented are like oh why didn't you respond to me right. um, but on Call of Duty that's what I do to it on that so if someone's swearing at me I just like uh, me and my friends classic responses okay dear friend and it's so funny because people will be like what <laughs> I had one kid right back Hey, I just wanted to apologize for my outburst. I was really angry. Keep playing how you're playing and have a good day. And I was like, oh, I, love that. I was like, that is amazing. I'm like, it worked. The, the, the kill him with kindness thing worked. This kid, this little kid, I, get, I don't know how old he was, but just by his grammar, it seemed like he was young, could be an That's adult. Darling. But it was so nice. And I, me and my friends were dying laughing because the okay, dear friend mm -hmm. works every time. Well, okay, dear friend. Yeah. This was a really good interview. Awesome. And thanks for being with us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Awesome.